So now you should have your logic analyzer open, your saline, and you can organize your settings however you want, but as usual I have my chip select at the bottom, my clock, and then data quad 0123 so that I can read like that. And then this time I have the VCC as well, the power, so that I can watch the power for reasons that we'll see shortly. Okay, so now we're going to start the logic analyzer, and then we start the DETI prog so that we can see how it's going to actually identify the chip. So it successfully seemed to find something, and we know that it's this particular chip based on the physical markings. So it's saying that there's ambiguity between all of these, and it can't tell which of these it is because they all sort of identify the same for purposes of the identification that it does. So we're going to select the correct one, and then let's go back and see how this actually worked. If we look at the overview, then we're going to see just a few SPY transactions right here. Let me go ahead and slice this down, delete the data before the marker. I'm going to delete the data after the marker. All right, and then this is what we see. Now I'm going to shortcut over here. If I double click on this, it'll zoom in directly on that middle thing here. So I'm going to also, so I've set up my QSPY analyzer, so you can do the same if you'd like. So as usual, the enable is the chip select, clock, MOSI MISO, write protect and hold for DQ0123. I'm going to have it in extended mode. This particular one, I set it for eight dummy clock cycles. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is not having any dummy clock cycles in these particular uh, sequence of commands that are being sent. And so I save that. Now I'm going to restart this. I'm going to right click and restart so that it properly analyzes my data because I've done other sequences before this. So it tells me that the first command that is sent is 9f, which is called read ID. So to figure out what that is, we would of course have to read the phone manual. And so this is the data sheet for that. It is a W25Q16DV. And we search the data sheet for 9f. And we'll see that it says that this is how it works. You send a 9f on the data in, the IO0, and you expect back a manufacturer ID, which for Winbond is always going to be EF, and then some sort of memory type ID and capacity ID. So if we wanted to know what specifically those values are, we could search for 9f, and then we'll find a table that has those for us. So this is the table, it says 9f for this chip W25Q16DV should return 4015. Okay, so we expect that we should see EF immediately followed by hex 40 and hex 15. So do we see that? Let's go ahead and here's the data out zero or data quad one. So let's go look at that. And here we do indeed see EF but we expect three bytes, not one. So what's going on? Well, here we actually see that the Dediprog has taken the chip select and moved it high. So essentially it has terminated this three byte expected return after only a single byte. My expectation is that Dediprog is probably doing this because all the various spy flash chips behave slightly differently. So it's probably first wanting to get the manufacturer ID, EF, for Winbond before it does some other particular logic that is perhaps Winbond specific or for other vendors, they maybe need to do something specific. So after this EF is sent out, then what happens next? Well, then the Dediprog sends a 9F again, and let's see the output of that. Okay, this time the Dediprog let the chip select stay low long enough that we could get all three bytes. So we have EF, hex 40, hex 15, and that is exactly what we would expect to see based on the data sheet telling us we should see EF, and then one byte, two bytes, which elsewhere in the data sheet it says should be 40 and 15. So this is what the Dediprog does normally when you open it up and it's saying, you know, okay, I'm trying to identify, but then it says, you know, something is ambiguous. That means that there's a bunch of other Windbond devices where they're also going to return 4015. So we basically expect that all these sort of Windbond devices are all going to always return for 9F, EF, 4015. So that is why the human then has to select and make it unambiguous. Once you select the device, then it you know says that it's choosing the voltage to apply because it knows, okay, this particular wind bond that you've told me to select is going to run at 1.8 volts. 
And actually, strike what I just said, that is a little bit misleading. It, it looks like it's applying 1.8 volts, but down here it says that the chip VCC is actually 3.8 volts. And that's more accurate and more correct because if we look at the data sheet, we will see that it says 3 volt. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that the nominal voltage range that it can go between is 2.7 to 3.6. So here it says single 2.7 to 3.6 volt supply. So that is why the Daddy Prog actually is saying, you know, it's 3.3 volts here. I don't know why it says 1.8 right there. Anyways, let's move on to seeing what the behavior is on a chip where this detection failed. Actually, before that, let's just, you know, confirm for our own purposes that we can actually not just identify, but read out the contents of the flash chip. And indeed, these are the contents. And based on this, you know, there's not the special magic signature I would expect to see at the beginning to say this is a Intel spy flash descriptor interpretation. But if I look all the way at the end, I do see that I have a 9090 E9 9B, and I recognize this as x86 assembly for no op, no op, and jump some negative distance backwards. So this is the typical reset vector that you would see from Architecture 4001 class. If we didn't see that, then, you know, we might think, well, maybe this is just some other 2 megabit flash chip that's sitting off to the side uh, that has some unknown thing, and then we'd have to go do searching through strings or something to find out what exactly it's used for. But no, based on the fact that we see the reset vector down here, we can reasonably conclude that this particular system has an orientation where the 8 megabyte chip that we can't read is used for the reset vector, or sorry, for the bottom 8 megabits, megabytes rather, and then the 2 megabyte chip that we can read right now is probably the top 2 megabytes. So it's probably it requires a 10 megabyte worth of BIOS, and it's split up between two chips. Okay, so now let's go see what happens with that other chip when we try to read it.